Hi, thank you so much for joining me for the acronym explanation series. My name is Jen and I'm on a healing journey, breaking free from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and embracing a nourishing lifestyle. I am using an original acronym of the word nourisher to help guide my healing process. And in this series, I'm going to take a deep dive into each of the letters of the nourisher acronym in order to explain it to you further. So thank you for joining me and let's dig in. Hi, thank you so much for joining me as we are going to unpack the letter H in our Nourisher acronym. And H stands for hydration. There is not one cell or process in your body that is not impacted by the level of hydration, by the amount of water that we are providing our bodies with. Actually, our brain is 75% made up of water, so it just makes sense that if we were to deprive our brain of water, that it would greatly impact so many different processes, everything from sleep to mood to cognition and on and on and on is greatly, greatly impacted by the amount of water that we're giving our body. Now, it should be very... Um, Maybe sounds really standard to say we should be drinking more water. Of course, you know, most, um, most professionals suggest six to eight glasses of water per day. And this is kind of a, a known stat. However, when we're talking about uh, those of us who are struggling with eating disorders, it is not so um, easy or not so basic just to say, oh yeah, just drink more water or drink less water. So just to shine a little bit of light around this idea of, um, or some of the complexities around hydration when it comes to eating disorders. Um, you know, I've said it before, I said it when we were talking about the eye, about insulin friendly eating, is that if you're addicted to another um, substance, which can be an incredibly difficult um, journey to walk through, there is at least the option to cut that substance out of your life. But when you struggle with an eating disorder, um, food and water cannot be cut out of your life. And therefore, every single day, you need to confront um, the things that can be um, just the biggest struggle for you. So in the same way that we talked about with food, how it can be so easy to, you know, binge or restrict that same pattern can happen for our loved ones who are dealing with eating disorders, um, around their consumption with water. Some people will try to uh, drink lots and drink more in order to uh, kind of trick the brain into feeling that it is satiated or that it is full in order to help deal with the incredible gnawing cravings for food or for certain foods. They'll try to uh, drink lots of water. And of course, drinking water uh, can be a healthy way to manage um, our, because our, our brain, when it gives that cue, um, it's easy for us to mistake a thirst cue for a hunger cue. And um, that can be a helpful thing. It's a good reason to be hydrated. And yet it can also be used um, as a, a way of thinking that you're helping, but actually um, harming our bodies is by um, hydrating too much in order to suppress those hunger cues. And of course, others um, try to dehydrate in order to avoid bloating. Um, you know, hydration gives us that great elasticity in our skin. You can also often tell from your skin whether or not you're uh, you're properly hydrated. Um, but when um, many people with eating disorders start to see false, um, not be able to see the true reality of what they look like and, and are desiring uh, for uh, increased uh, thinness or a particular body image, sometimes they strive to do that by not only limiting food, but also limiting hydration. So this isn't as easy um, a topic as you might think, oh yeah, just drink six, six to eight glasses or as easy as me saying, hey, hydration really helps um, us in our desire to handle our emotions, in our desire to show up the way that we want relationally, uh, to keep us off of the uh, round and round and round and round um, cycle of the eating disordered cycles. It's not enough for me just to say that, um, but to also recognize that there are greater complexities around these issues, both of eating as well as hydration. But please, for those of us who are on this healing journey and on our way through it, hydrating is a beautiful way to nourish our bodies and to give our bodies what it needs. Um, 
Hydration, of course, can, as I've mentioned, can impact our mood and our cognition. And when we are dehydrated, because the brain is 75% um, is water, one of the first things that, and they've actually just started, I think in like 2013 was the first time that they started actually researching the impact of dehydration on the brain, which really surprised me that this is a newer thing that is getting attention but it greatly impacts the brain when we are dehydrated. And one of the first thing that it does is the brain starts to shut systems down um, and causes you to feel sleepy and uh, of course, re you know, impaired cognition um, because it's just trying to get you to, to, to rest and, uh, and kind of to, to not tax the system beyond what it can handle. So um, the good news is that with hydration, if you do get to the point of being a little bit dehydrated, is that your body can, can rehydrate very quickly. Uh, and I was very shocked to find out that I would have thought that room temperature water is the best to rehydrate, but actually your body absorbs cold water faster than it absorbs um, uh, room temperature water, which, which surprised me. So let's nourish our bodies, let's care for them, let's be not only feeding it, a healthy, nutritious food that has uh, lots that our body can draw from it, but also be hydrating and keeping our organs and our minds in a healthy state by giving it lots of water.